Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video we are going to be solving a problem from oscillations chapter of Pathfinder and this is the check your understanding question number seven. So let's read the problem statement. So, a small disk of mass m is attached to one end of a light inextensible cord which passes through a frictionless hole in a frictionless horizontal tabletop. At the other end of the cord is attached a weight of mass capital M. Initially, the disc is moving on a circle of radius R with an angular velocity of omega. If the hanging weight is pulled slightly downwards and then released, it will undergo small amplitude oscillations. So we have to find the angular frequency of these oscillations. Okay, so let's begin with the problem. Okay, so this is a rough diagram of the situation. Okay, so if we consider the equilibrium situation, so what's happening is the mass M over here is rotating in a circle and this mass capital M uh, is remaining in equilibrium. So let's try to write down the equilibrium force condition. Well, clearly as it is in equilibrium, the tension in the string uh, would first of all equal to the weight of the block that is mg. So this would be a first equation. And secondly, as this mass M is moving in a circle of constant radius, we can write the tension, the tension force is providing the required centripetal acceleration or we can actually just write uh, everything from the rotational frame of reference, right? So we can simply provide it with the centrifugal force whose magnitude is m omega square r and this must be balanced by the tension t in the rotational frame. So we can simply write t is m omega square times r. So these two have to be equal which means m omega square r must equal so this is our equilibrium condition so now we are going to be disturbing the system basically we are displacing this mass m down by an amount of let's say delta r okay okay so uh, clearly as we pull the mass m downwards by a bit the radius of the orbit is now going to decrease right so it is going to now become r minus delta r okay so if you observe this smaller mass over here the only force acting on the smaller mass in the horizontal plane is the tension t and as the tension t is acting towards the center of this circle the net torque acting on the mass m about the origin of the circle is going to be zero right so hence we can say let's name the center as o so tau about o is going to be equal to zero and therefore we can say the angular momentum of this smaller mass is going to remain conserved even as we are decreasing the radius of the orbit okay the formula for angular momentum is for of a point mass is simply m r squared times omega where r is the radius of its orbit okay okay so now the initial angular momentum was m r squared times omega this and final angular momentum is going to be m times r minus delta r squared times the final omega. So from here the final omega becomes this particular value. Okay so now let's try to write down the force balance equation in this particular situation. Okay so let's say the acceleration that originated as a result of as disturbing the system uh, is exactly along the direction of the disturbance. So as delta R was in the downward direction, the acceleration will also be in the downward direction. And hence as a result, uh, even the acceleration of this smaller mass over here will be A, uh, but in the minus R cap direction, right? Because of the string constraint, right? So if we are pulling this mass in the vertically downward direction, this has to move along the radial direction because the length of the string has to remain constant. Now, what we can do is write down the force balance equation. There are two ways to write down the force balance equation. And the first is uh, with respect to the ground frame. And with respect to the ground frame, uh, for this capital M mass, we can write mg minus t equals ma. And for the small m mass, we can write the only force acting in the horizontal plane is t. So t is a net force. And this would be equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now the acceleration would have two components. One is A itself, right? Um, and then it will also have an additional term of R omega square as it is moving in a circle. So the acceleration would be A plus R minus delta R because that's the new radius of the orbit, right? Times the omega F squared. So, and secondly, if you want to write uh, it with respect to the rotating frame of reference, you have to provide a centrifugal force, which is M omega F squared r minus delta r and now you can uh, write one single equation for the entire system uh, as tension is now an internal force the equation is going to be mg minus m omega f squared r minus delta r equals capital m plus small m times a right because uh, with respect to the rotational frame of reference what's going to happen is uh, this mass is going to go down and this mass is simply going to go along the radius right uh, there won't be any rotation these are two methods to write down the equation of motion and they are both correct 
Uh, in fact, if you add one of these two equations, you'll get that itself. Anyway, so now let's continue with our calculation. So omega f, we obtained the value for it above. Now I can take r common from the denominator. So it will be r cubed. Okay, so this is what we end up with. As we have to talk about small oscillations, we can say delta r is going to be much less than capital R. And hence we can use a binomial approximation. So an m r omega square guys, uh, from our first equilibrium condition, this is equal to mg. And this would be one plus n x okay this would be minus 3 and this would be 1 plus n x so it will be 3 times delta r by r and we can ignore the second order term so this would equal capital M plus small m times a so as you can see the capital mg term is getting cancelled out this is the differential equation that we are obtaining for the relation of the acceleration as a function of r and as acceleration is coming out to be negative of the disturbance or the displacement these oscillations are simple harmonic in nature the angular frequency is going to be square root of 3mg divided by capital M plus small m times r. Now in the answer key, uh, they have given it in terms of the omega. And for that, we'll use the equilibrium condition again. So uh, this is going to be 3. Now mg is m omega squared r. So this would be 3m omega squared divided by capital M plus small m. So this was our required answer for the problem. And so that's it for this video, guys. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below. Do like, subscribe and share this video if you enjoyed it. And that's it. Thanks for watching.